Okay, well, I, we're just going to go ahead and get started because I have a feeling there are going to be lots of questions too um, and lots of good information. So we're going to start with the um, presentation by the ACLU. Hi, my name is Nicole Robinson. I'm a policy analyst with the ACLU of Georgia, um, and I also have the pleasure of living in the 50th House District. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful to be here and I'm happy to have the opportunity to speak with y'all a little bit today. Um, obviously voting rights is one of our top priorities, so it's great to be able to talk to y'all about it. Um, and as a Fulton County resident, um, to talk to y'all from Fulton County about it specifically. And so at the ACLU, obviously we work to protect people's civil rights and civil liberties, and voting is one of those fundamental rights upon which all civil liberties rest. Um, over, over the last few election cycles, there have been numerous barriers to the ability to vote for a lot of folks in Fulton County. And so there are things that can be done, we believe, to help mitigate some of those concerns and to address them for 2020 since it's going to be a really big election cycle. And the presidential pri preference primary is coming up really soon. In the general election, there's going to be a lot going on as well. Um, and so we just want to make sure that all Fulton County voters have fair and equal access to the ballot. And so obviously everybody knows voters faced extremely long lines. They were insufficiently trained poll workers and like other issues. A lot of these issues happened in predominantly black communities and black voters faced the biggest amount of issues. Um, and so one of the things that created a lot of confusion, I would say, was the kind of use it or lose it policy of the state, right? There were a lot of concerns over the eligibility of people's um, ability to cast a ballot. And, uh, poll workers weren't necessarily adequately trained or given the right information to make sure that the proper procedures were followed when these things happened, especially as it related to provisional ballots. Um, that was a really, really big issue, and we'd really like for that not to be a big an issue this year. And then another concern that we have is with the new voting machines, and the state doesn't really mandate a lot of training for poll workers, and a lot of that's left up to the counties. Um, so it's our hope that Fulton County will put a specific emphasis on making sure the poll workers are adequately trained to ensure that everybody has equal and fair access to the ballot. Um, and some of our kind of thoughts with that is to make sure that poll workers get as much hands-on experience with the new machines as possible. And one of our specific recommendations that we have is for when poll workers are checking folks in, that they ask all the voters that check in if they need assistance at all with casting their ballot. We don't think it's great to put that burden on the voter to have to ask or to have to know what sorts of instances where they are allowed to have assistance and where they're not allowed to have assistance. Um, and we also, further relating to poll worker training, um, want to make sure that poll workers have the proper education on how to assist voters who are differently able, especially people who are visually and hearing impaired. Um, want to make sure that they know what they can and can't do to help folks who have limited sight and who have limited hearing. Um, and we want to make sure that those voters are also able to cast their ballots as independently as possible. And so one of the things, we know that they're required to have magnifiers, but of course making sure that there's a decent amount so that people aren't waiting around for them and creating longer lines. And then also having scanners that people can use that um, take text to audio. It shouldn't be assumed that everyone who's visually impaired will have that. And then also making sure that the poll workers know that some folks who are visually impaired will have those capabilities on like a cell phone. Um, and making sure that it's very clear to them, like just because somebody takes out a cell phone does not mean they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. It might just be that they need assistance and that's what their cell phone is there for. So that's one of the things we really want to make sure poll workers are aware of. Um, and then again, back to the provisional ballots, just making sure poll workers know the proper guidelines for when to give somebody a provisional ballot and making sure they're giving them the correct information they need to follow up on the provisional ballot. Um, and so our kind of overall recommendation as it relates to poll worker training is to have the county provide like a one page or maybe two page document to every poll worker that answers any frequently asked questions about to how to accommodate voters who are visually and hearing impaired and then also the proper protocol for ballots and we'd be happy to work with um, the Board of Elections or y'all on getting something like that put together. Another thing that we're pretty concerned about and I'm sure a lot of y'all are as well is making sure that there's the right number of voting machines 
at each precinct and that they all have the right equipment to make sure that they can function properly. And so we know that there's going to be a learning curve using the new machines for new voters. We also know there's going to be a learning curve for the poll workers. And then with any sort of new technology, there's always the possibility that it could malfunction. Um, and so we want to make sure that there's enough machines to accommodate for that. And then the turnout trends, there are more and more people voting every election, which is great, and especially in Fulton County, as the county is growing and folks are getting registered to vote at higher rates. We know that there's going to be more people than what's going to be expected, and we know there's going to be more people voting than the number of machines that are required by the state. And so the, obviously the state requires one voting machine per every 250 electors. Um, and so like whatever extent that it's logistically feasible, because I know the machines have been purchased already and they're working on deploying them to the county and the precincts, we need, need to make sure there's enough machines for each precinct, especially the ones that have historically high turnout and the ones where the turnout trends are increasing. Um, another thing that we're pretty concerned about is the privacy issue. Um, the new machines are, the screens are very large. Um, and so due to the size of the machines, there's a lot of concern, I think, at the ACLU and with other folks about uh, ballot security and ballot privacy. And the right to cast a secret ballot is like a basic civil liberty. And if people don't feel comfortable passing, casting their ballots, it could lead to like vote coercion um, or hinder folks' ability to vote for the candidate of their choice and to feel comfortable voting for the candidate of their choice. And so one of the ideas that we've kind of thought about is just making sure the machines are set up in a way that they, you can't see the screen if you're standing behind somebody. So whether it's somebody who's like in line to vote or a poll worker or a poll observer, we just want to make sure that the screens can't be seen by anybody except for the voter. Um, another concern that we have is making sure that no precincts are combined this year. That was a really big issue in 2018, um, particularly with the Pittman Park Recreation Center fiasco that happened. Um, we understand that sometimes combining precincts is a necessity, but wherever it's something that is absolutely required, obviously we'd like that it's not something that happens at all, but if it's ever required, making sure that there right number of machines and machine equipment and poll workers are there to accommodate the increase in voters that will be voting at any of those precincts locations. Um, and another recommendation that we have is for the county to increase weekend voting. I believe last year the county had two Saturdays and two Sundays, or not last year, um, 2018, had two Saturdays and two Sundays for the general election. And so we recommend increasing that by at least one extra Saturday and one extra Sunday. Of course, more than that would be great um, also. And then another thought that we've had is seeing if the county can work with the Board of Commissioners and cities within the county to make Election Day a holiday. Um, the city of South Fulton did it, and then the um, Fulton County Public Schools or also have Election Day as a county holiday. And one thought we have with that is potentially exchanging Election Day for Columbus Day if there are any issues over like having too many um, county holidays. And that's all I got. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions? Hey, um, <clears throat> thank you for being here. I want to first um, thank the ACLU for the work that you do. Um, I'm old enough to remember when uh, the ACLU was not very popular um, for standing up for folks that um, were trying to exercise their First Amendment rights. But, um, you know, civil liberties are a cornerstone of our democracy. It's incredibly important. It takes people that are focused solely on that um, to make sure that we have a functioning democracy. So thank you for what you're doing. Um, I, I guess I have, um, I could probably ask a lot of questions, but let me just start with a few. Um, privacy while voting. Um, I guess I've seen a couple um, news articles on that just recently. With these machines, I know they're new, um, and you may not have the answer to the questions. Uh, maybe uh, the Board of, uh, of Elections or um, another org has the, the information. What What is the solution that works? Have you seen any solutions that can help um, increase and enhance privacy with the new voting machines? Um, so, of course, having barriers that are high enough up on the sides and in the fronts of the machines, but our kind of thought is maybe just making sure that when the machines are set up in whatever polling location, 
there's a wall behind the person so that nobody can be standing behind them and see the machine. So, so that's an easy fix. You can just turn the machines around. Right. So, so normally when we were all used to walking in, the machines are facing towards the center of the room. But that's, so that's like a, honestly a, a no cost, fair, fairly quick fix that can yeah. be implemented for the, the March presidential preference primary, right? Yeah, we think so. Thank you. Th those kind of solutions are really, really helpful. Representative Jackson, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Representative Derek Jackson. I'm the uh, Vice Chair for Foot and Colony uh, Delegation. Uh, I also appreciate ACLU and the work that you all do. <clears throat> but I just want to make sure that we expand um, our scope. Um, it's not just the machines that we need to focus on and make sure that there are appropriate number of machines at precincts. Uh, keep in mind the lessons learned and we continue to relearn around absentee ballots and uh, provisional ballots, right? And making sure that uh, those individuals are properly trained and we have some standardization. And so um, I think, you know, organizations such as yours need to continue to stress upon um, the Secretary of State like we're stressing upon the Secretary of State and make sure that individuals are properly trained when they walk into that precinct that they understand how the provisional ballots work and don't work. And so that way they're not leaving that precinct thinking that their vote counted and, and we know what happened, right? And so we just got to make sure that we expand our scope around um, beyond just the machines and the security of the machines and the use of the machines. We got to make sure that these um, uh, precinct workers understand how absentee ballots if somebody walks in there and talk about absentee ballots and where they need to be directed and make sure that that information is, uh, because a lot of folks still believe that absentee ballots are, I mean, provisional ballots are treated like absentee ballots. Hi, thank you for coming. I have a piece of legislation that I've been pushing down here for several years that will allow people to vote at any precinct within their county on election day. And uh, it's been held up. Um, quite frankly, they were very straight up with me. They said if, if the bill passes, it would make it too easy for people to vote, and they don't particularly want to make it that easy for people to vote. That was the answer I got. What is the, the thought from your organization on something like that, on having a piece of legislation or a bill that would allow people to vote in any precinct? Um, well, I can't speak to your bill specifically, but I'd, act, I'd actually really enjoy the opportunity to speak with you outside of this, maybe a little bit more about it. Um, but of course, the right to vote is a fundamental civil liberty, and we support making it easier for people to vote. And I want to recognize Representative Sheila Jones. Will you introduce yourself, sometimes? Hello, I'm Representative Sheila Jones. I represent part of Fulton County and part of Cobb County. Thank you. Right. And, and Representative Ferguson? So, um, what's your organization? Voting is obviously very important, as is the registration process. Um, I'm getting reports, and, and I know it's a very difficult process. I'm getting reports of people who register, they receive their card in the mail, and it's to a different precinct than we know that address it is. Then when they go online, they're, they're assigned to their, their original precinct um, and are told, well, we'll resend you a new card. Do you know, or, or would that more be the, the county for the elections handles? Who handles sending out the cards? Because these are, are young people who are registering. They're registering at their parents' home address because that's where they still live. Parents have lived there for 20 plus years, and this is in my neighborhood, has happened to a few of the high school kids are calling me, or their parents are calling me, that they're not getting, the card says a different precinct than what we, we've voted at the same precinct now for 27 years. I believe that's the county that sends out those reminders. I'm sure there's somebody from the county here who can speak to that. Um, but. Yeah, I think it's up to the county to send out those numbers. Right, so what I'm talking about, know, they, they call the, the Secretary of State's office, and what I'm telling them, whether or not they get it, go to the precinct that we, right now, we know, 
is, is the precinct and at least do a provisional ballot if it comes to that. But I'm scared other people aren't, you know, thinking through those thoughts also and they'll show up at the wrong place. One other, uh, <coughs> gosh, we could probably talk at length on everything you said, um, but we have other organizations present. But I did want to drill down on one more thing. You're talking about having the correct number of voting machines. Um, that always gets a lot of headlines. Um, you know, the county uh, does their best job, certainly, to try to get the voting machines in the right places, but it it always happens across the state that we don't have voting machines and um, particularly in my district um, when we're talking about districts with high minority participation um, my district and myself we get very concerned when there are extremely long lines um, in the deep south in areas where there's a high, high record of minority participation in the elections you specifically flagged um, making sure we have enough machines in precincts with high voter turnout and with rising voter turnout. Um, can you, you identify any areas in Fulton or just talk a little more about um, how we can drill down and make sure that those two categories have enough voting machines? So I can't name specific ones, but I'd be happy to work with y'all to pull a list of those. Thank you, and, and, and I, I will say this too, um, <coughs> Uh, you know, for the Fulton Board of Elections, when I reached out to the ACLU, um, reached out to Fairfight, they said, we have a good working relationship with the Fulton Board of Elections. We're collaborating, we're making progress. So that would be um, probably for a lot of us up here, a very, very important priority that we maintain that. And we do just the level best job we can this year in Fulton County. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um,